So in this lesson, I'm going to talk about something in SDL known as the event queue. You might have heard of this in sort of an event-driven programming environment where you have a series of events that you want to handle. What are events? Well, they could be things like handling mouse clicks, keyboard events, joystick events, audio events, and so on. So let's go ahead and illustrate what this is, and then we'll go ahead and implement the event queue in SDL. So here's our typical program here. And I'm going to draw just the machine here. Here's our keyboard our mouse, and so on. So what happens here is we have an SDL window that we're getting ready to draw here. And I'm just going to draw it here, SDL2. Now ideally for our program to be useful, if we're doing something graphical, say where we have a ball that's flying through the air, we want to be able to perhaps click on it and handle what that click event is. Or perhaps if we have an X in the window that we want to be able to click on, we want to be able to handle that event. So while our game is running here and objects are flying around and moving, that's usually occurring in an infinite loop. And within this program, though, there's going to be another event known as the event loop. And this is going to be an infinite loop that handles events off of a queue. So internally in STL, you're going to have this event queue here, and it's a queue data structure with little events that happen. E1, E2, E3, and those are the events that happened while your game was running between each iteration. So maybe you clicked and pressed a button at the same time, we'll handle event one, event two, and maybe you pressed another button, and so on. So that's how we get the responsiveness or the user interaction in our SDL programs. So let's go ahead and go into the code and start implementing this. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and open up our previous project or one of the previous projects that we were working on for creating a window. And typically when we start learning SDL, we just create a window, make sure that that works, and maybe just open it for three seconds and then our program's destroyed. So here, instead of just delaying our program, we're going to actually want to have a loop here. So an infinite loop for our application. And this might be something just as simple as while true or while game is running or some other state. Here. In fact, let's go ahead and make this a little bit more efficient. All game is running equals true. And we can just have this condition here. Okay, so if I recompile this application, so let me go ahead and do that and run it, we'll have a program that's running indefinitely here. But you'll notice if I click on the X here, um, it's not going to terminate. It doesn't know how to handle that event. In fact, this is just eventually going to crash because it's just running an empty window here. So let's go ahead and quit that application. And then we can continue onward. So our application had to be forcibly killed here. Okay, so let's do a little bit better and handle some of the events that are happening in our program. So the way that we're going to handle our event loop here that we talked about, and I'll bring over to the side here, is using an SDL function known as SDL whole event. So let's go ahead and open that up in the documentation, which I've previously searched for here. And we'll see what the SDL pull event is. And basically what this is doing is pulling for pending events. And what kind of events can SDL handle? Things like mouse clicks, keyboard presses, joystick, um, and so on. So we'll take a look at some of these events in a moment. Uh, and these are each handled in an SDL event. So let's go ahead and look at the typical structure given in the example. So here's our typical loop that we have. And within our loop, local to its scope, I'm going to create an SDL event here. Now let me go ahead and just type this out here. Event, and I'll give it a name, event. And this is going to be our event loop. So start our event loop here. And this is the loop within a loop. So what I'm going to do is pull for certain events here and pass in this event data type that we just created here. Again, remember this is a C data type. And then I can handle those events that happen. So handle each specific event. And these could be events such as a, a key press, for example, or some other just event in general that happens. So one of the most generic ones that uh, can occur is if our event and part of this struct type 
equals some event that indicates that we're quitting SVL. And I'll just go ahead and if this happens, I'll flip our flag game is running to false. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like in pool and try to run it and see if our program responds appropriately. So I'm going to go ahead and start running our program here. I'm going to click on the X and this time our SDL program successfully quits. So again, let's talk about what's happening in this code here. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit uh, so that you can see me here with this code. Here. So we have our infinite loop. Again, most applications like games or other video players are going to want to run indefinitely or until a user terminates them. So that's our infinite loop here where we're going to handle our game. And then we create an event here, this SGL event uh, data type or object or you know, user defined uh, data type. And it can handle certain things that happen. So within the create window, uh, for example, the little X in the corner would signify that there's some event pushed onto our system when that's uh, clicked on that would indicate that we are quitting here. So that's what we are testing for. And then because that occurred, we flipped our Boolean to false and thus can terminate our. So again, remember in this whole uh, event um, structure that we have in our event loop, what's essentially doing is just cooling off the front of each of these events on our queue here. Then we'll handle this event, and then we'll handle this event until that queue is actually empty. So let's go ahead and look at the documentation one more time before wrapping this up, just so we can see uh, what is going on here. Now, you don't explicitly have to pull off these events from the queue. In fact, this is the preferred style according to the documentation. Uh, but I do just want to quickly look at uh, SDL event here, just so you can get an idea of what's going on here. So there's different types of things that can happen, whether it's button presses, motion, maybe somebody typed in uh, some text. Um, so we'll be digging a little bit around as we learn how to learn and do things like keyboard presses, mouse clicks, and so on. Uh, but this can be a resource for just figuring out what kind of things can happen in this event. Again, it's typically implemented as just a giant uh, struct that has a bunch of different uh, states that get toggled based off of if the keyboard was pressed, the mouse, and so on. So I hope this is a nice introduction for the event loop for you. And now you know how to process events and create a program that's a little bit less boring.